Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and for the past couple of days, I've been seeing this pop up on my newsfeed, which is the Ice Tower by 52 Pi. I really wanted to get my hands on one, so I reached out to Seed Studio, and they sent me over this product. So let's check it out. Now again, I want to thank Seed Studio for sending me over this product and I'll leave all the links in the description below to where you get yours. And now let's talk about the cool factor on this guy. This makes the Raspberry Pi 4 look really good. And honestly, according to my previous reviews, you've seen it, this thing does get hot. So is it truly needed to, be, to have such a big cooler on this guy? And the answer is yes, because it's so cool looking. You might notice on my thumbnails, I have this little MOSFET stuck to the side of this. And that's because I coded my own fan controller to this cooler. So I don't have to constantly hear the fan noise run. Now I am working on a video where I am running the Raspberry Pi 4 for about, I think 10 days or so, or seven days as a daily driver. And one of the things that I did notice is the fan noise. And that's why I did that, made the fan controller just to keep the fan from spinning too high. Now here's how it sounds with a full blast. And here's how it sounds with my fan cooler mod. It consistently runs the fan around 20% or 30% or so, so it's a lot less load and less, less wear and tear on the actual fan. So in the long run, it's much better, I guess. So included in the package, you get two types of brackets, one for Raspberry Pi 3 and one for Raspberry Pi 4, which is awesome because they did switch around the Ethernet port, so the 3 wouldn't fit on the 4. Here's a little clip of it installed. You would see how you have to flip over those brass little connectors and use a nut on top. Now, there is some tension or some springiness to the bracket itself, so you do have to push down the bracket, which means it applies a lot of pressure to a CPU which is a really good thing because I didn't think that that would do that. I, I thought it would really have to rely on the adhesion of the thermal pads, but no, it, it's actually very good in installation. It makes a really good contact with the CPU. Now, as far as the power goes, you just need it on pin two for the power and pin three for the ground. Now, as far as my fan controller mod, I am using a MOSFET. Now, that's the only thing I had laying around because I was working on a previous project. You could use an NPM, but MOSFET is what I had laying around. I do have a 15K resistor on there and that's again left from my previous project. It's fine. You could probably use a lower resistance, but that's up to you. So pin one on the MOSFET, that goes to signal, uh, which is the Raspberry Pi pin number six, the PWM pin. Then you have the middle where it goes to the ground of the fan. And then the one, the pin number three, which is the one all the way to your right, goes to the ground on the board. Now my little code, what it does is it senses the temperature of the CPU itself and then adjusts the fan speed by 5% each second. So it'll go up or down depending on how hot or how cool the CPU is. And then I also have a target temperature. So if it stays within that, say 50 degrees area, it'll keep the fan at that rate. So 30% or 20%. So you, normally my fan will idle around like 30% speed. If you guys are more proficient at coding this, please do so. It will be on my GitHub. I just put this together and I'm not a big fan expert. So the code is just very rough draft of what it can do. So let's get some baseline stats on this. Without the heat sink, this is the temps. Now the first minute is just idle. The next six minutes is full stress load. And then the last three minutes is basically a cool down. I'm gonna, I don't have any process going and let's see how long it takes to cool off. Now here it is with the ice tower without the fan and it does a lot better. And you could see that the heat sink actually does a lot of the work. You don't really need the fan to be on here, but it's just so cool with it. Now here it is the stats with the heat sink and the fan. This thing is amazing. I mean, including the fact that it's so big and bulky and it looks like, you know, a tower you would find on a PC, it works so well. And now here's the stats with my fan controller mod. And you can see, I try to keep it above just a little bit here with the fan on and trying to keep the fan at a low speed so it's not that loud. Also by doing this, you get like a really cool heartbeat effect like you would find on the Ryzen. It'll brighten up and then dim and then brighten up. It's, it's really cool. As far as my conclusion goes, I think this is a really cool setup going on with this huge tower heatsink and also with my fan controller mod that make it look like has, it has a heartbeat like the Ryzen's. I, I think it's a really cool combo. And if you ever decide to use this for a desktop or either a full retro machine that you constantly have running, yeah, it's a good addition. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. 
If you guys have any questions about this, hit it in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.